Welcome everybody to Growing in Uncertainty. My name is Tess Miller and through my seminar and coaching and therapeutic music and sound business, Wings Unfolded, I help people identify and move past whatever is keeping them stuck. And as a person who literally wrote the book of stuck, I am a self-proclaimed expert on being stuck. My intention with these videos is to share all that I've learned and am continuing to learn about being stuck and working through the process of being stuck. And my hope is that we can grow in uncertainty together. So I have a guest joining me today. Um, my guest is Adam Stevens, and Adam is a life and wellness coach from St. Louis, Missouri. He's a 15-year veteran of the healthcare industry and now operates a holistic wellness private coaching practice to help busy adults create the mindset and habits for lasting health and happiness. He designs custom food and fitness plans for his clients and teaches mindfulness, meditation, breath work, and devotional prayer practices. So welcome, Adam, to Growing in Uncertainty. Hey, what's going on? Good to be here. <laughs> so what inspired you to become a wellness coach? Well, that's a really good question. We could record a two-hour podcast about how this evolved, but... Probably just, you know, ever since I was a kid, knowing that I wanted to do something impactful and helping people, um, being super conscientious, um, people have always just spilled their guts to me, <laughs> like even since I was a kid, you know, uh, and that could be because I'm introverted and a little bit shy. And like, so I sort of pause and listen and I always want to understand. So I ask deeper questions and I like to call myself, you know, a recovered empath and then like super highly sensitive person and have sort of like adapted to that, you know, as a young adult and an adult as I head into middle age. But really, I didn't really like think of the term holistic and still until I started to start my business and really chart down the path, you know, and my background, you know, I was formerly morbidly obese, you know, I had some alcoholism issues, I'm 15 years sober. A lot of the, the transformative work I've done was around wellness. There was some therapeutic stuff and, and, um, and a ton of recovery work, codependency work too. But I didn't think anybody was doing what I needed, right? I would kind of like go around, you know, I went to yoga stuff. I went to gurus. Like I would kind of go around everywhere and I couldn't really find anybody that was doing like, like the whole shebang, right? And I have an allied health degree. I'm a respiratory therapist. You know, I've worked in the ER and the ICU and done, you know, adults and pediatrics. And in my health training and medical training, which is very hard science, it's very tangible, right? Like, um, I didn't think they were getting it right either because I would, you know, be taking care of patients with COPD and emphysema and diabetes. And I'd be like, and, and people would ask me, what, what, what intervention do we need? Because like as, as an RT or, you know, we're always looking for the best intervention to help someone, right? Like if they're in crisis, if they're in acute phase of a disease, like we need to rescue them or if they're in that kind of moderate chronic phase. And I would always joke, I would say, we need a time machine. Like we need to go back 30 years ago and put down the camels and put down the booze and put down the sugars and like help people like, you know, get the whole picture, right? Because, and I say this on my website, like right on the very first paragraph, it's that mental health and physical health aren't separate domains. Like they don't exist in isolation of one another. And then even like on the therapeutic path and stuff, the more I dug into stuff, it was like, yeah, well, the past is important and it's great, but how do I move forward? Right. You know, and you know, I worked with therapists that were also obese and I'm trying to recover from being 300 pounds and all this stuff. And I'm, and, and I'm not, you know, I think you have to walk a path. You need to be farther down the path than the person you're trying to serve and guide. And I just couldn't really find anybody who was doing what, what, what I was interested in, what I think I needed. And I knew someone, I started to work with a coach. Um, it, she was a counselor, but she also had life coach was like one of her top services. And I noticed that how she coached me, it was very directive. There wasn't a lot of navel gazing. It wasn't, um, there was, it was challenging, right? And we dug into some old stuff, but we dug, dug in a lot to masculinity and like spirituality. Like we talked a lot about God and divinity and my old wounds from religious guilt and stuff. 
And that's when I realized, like she suggested, I was interviewing grad schools and stuff. And she was like, what do you really want to do? I was like, well, I know I want to write. I know I want to do whiteboard. I want to do cameras. I want to run a YouTube channel. And she was like, I think you should try and become a life coach. She's like, the mental health path is great. But based on what you're, you want, if you want to run seminars and do public speaking and sort of like really meet people in that realm, you should consider coaching. And she gave me a referral to another friend who had been a life coach. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I entered a program and it was, it's been amazing. So that was a very long answer. Hopefully we can kind of reel that in and, and give people more of an idea about what I really do. Oh, that's really awesome, though. It's it's always great to hear people's paths and how they got there. Um, you know, our we we are our histories and how we move through those histories. So it's really great to hear you just kind of put into perspective everything that brought you to where you are today. Mm -hmm. So, as you know, I love collecting stuck stories from people and. Um, you know, we all have those moments in our lives where we've really felt stuck. What stuck story would you like to share with us today? Yeah, so I think like there's a couple that stick out, but like probably the one that's most impactful to how I became what I became and how I kind of, you know, run my practice would be like the, the thing that so many college students get into where they're coming out of college and they don't have a career path really. Like I studied liberal arts, I studied philosophy and got a minor in psychology. So I wasn't ready for grad school and all that. And I had sort of just gone off to the circus with a lot of it. It's really into jazz, improvisational rock concerts, fish, different, you know, just, you could, I was kind of a, I was a big time hippie. I had a lot more hair <laughs> and, um, and coming out of that, I was trying to kind of lay down roots in my life. And, you know, at one point, I just was a really lost soul, you know, and I wound up having to go through detox. I got hospitalized and like had to like really rebuild myself because when you go through an alcoholic detox, like everything comes up that was there. Like, you, I mean, I mean, typically alcoholics are people who, who, who aren't really like big on like reality. Right. I mean, you're checking out when you're drinking all the time, smoking pot all the time. So as I got sober within the first like year or so of being sober, I gained like a hundred pounds. It was just like, it was really quickly refined sugar became like the new opiate. Right. And, you know, I found myself, you know, in 2009, 2010 being like this massively obese person with a whole lot of pain, a whole lot of unresolved stuff, you know, and I just, I, I felt hopeless a lot. It was like really, really challenging. And I didn't really feel like the people who I was seeking care through, like in the medical, like anybody really understood what was up. And um, no one was really meeting me in my spirituality and like helping me like refine things from a much, much deeper level, like the eternal level, right? And um it was just really hard. It was just really difficult. And, and it, and, and my path out of that kind of started with like, I really, I, I found Tony Robbins, who's sort of like a motivational, like if there's one person who started life coaching, it's Tony Robbins. <laughs> and like, I went online and like, you know, illegally downloaded a whole set of one of his workshops and like started literally at 300 pounds and three XL, you know, basketball shorts like power walking down through my neighborhood and saying, I love my life. I will get well, you know, <laughs> and all that stuff that Tony and the tapping, right. And all that stuff and reading Wayne Dyer and Eckhart Tolle and Byron Katie doing it, like going to a ton of recovery meetings and doing the whole 12 step thing too. And that's sort of like what moved me out of probably what I would say is like literally the darkest, probably 24 to 36 months of my entire existence. Wow. So. That's wow. What an incredible transformation you went through in kind of a relatively short amount of time. Mm -hmm. When did you realize you were stuck? I don't know. Like, I don't, I mean, my intuition now as someone who's done just a ton of healing work and been trained in the coaching modality, like the way I use intuition now I wasn't aware of 
like I wasn't really aware of what was going on, right? It was very surface level. I knew that I was overweight. I knew that I had medical challenges. I knew that I couldn't breathe when I was sleeping. I knew that I had chronic sinus infections and my doctor was counseling me on developing diabetes and stuff, but I didn't like somewhere in there, I started to sort of like realize, oh, I'm going to have to do some work here. Right. And it's not, it's not going to be as simple as just go talk to a counselor or just go to Weight Watchers meetings. Like all the stuff I was trying to do, it was like, oh man, this is really multifaceted. And I really had to get to the point of like getting unstuck becomes like a daily exercise at that point when you're in the dark and like, you know, antidepressants aren't really working and all that stuff. So it was like going, it was like every day I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. Right. And even like some of those days, like sleeping for 12 hours, just not wanting to get out of bed. It was like, I'm going to do this. Right. And it was just, I knew something within me knew in that time of my life, like you can do this. Like you're just going to have to like march it forward one day at a time. It was really hard. So. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I love what you said about um, making the process of getting unstuck a daily practice Mm -hmm. that, you know, you really engaged with and woke up every day knowing, okay, I got to do this. I've got to, I've got to heal myself. Um, That's amazing. What, um, when did you realize that you were no longer stuck? I'm trying to think of like the exact moments. Like I know I can, I know that I wound up like over a little bit of a year period, like losing like 90 pounds. And I remember more and more people were asking me, what are you doing? How are you doing that? And I know that my social circle had really expanded. I started to hang out with new people. Um, I just started to go to different parts of St. Louis. Like I had moved to St. Louis, but I'd never really explored St. Louis. Like I moved into the suburbs and never like explored it. So I was meeting new people and I was just kind of getting out there. And that was probably like, so if bottom was like 2009, 2010, then probably by about 2012, I felt like a radically different person, right? Like I was still sort of, I think we all battle our demons, right? I was still battling some stuff, but I definitely... I definitely didn't feel like this sort of passive, shy, like obese guy anymore. I felt like my voice was coming out more. I really felt like I just became a different person altogether, you know? Yeah. Well, it really sounds like as you were changing yourself on the inside, you know, really working with your inner demons, you started to see your external world start to change. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that relationship between you know, our changing internal landscape, interacting with our external circumstance? Well, I think like at the deepest level, I see that all the time. And like, there's enough. I don't want to be too theoretical on the coaching side about it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about both. But it's understanding that internally, like, no matter what is like, if there's such a thing as peace, if you're going to be a person that's generally happy, you have to be able to live in really agreement with with whatever your reality is. Mm -hmm. And as you grow up a little bit um, through your, just in life in general and through, you know, any work you're doing, healing work you're doing, you have to ultimately understand that you're in charge of your happiness and okay so it's like i'm in charge of my happiness and then the deeper awareness is and i deserve to be happy Mm -hmm. right or i always tell people you're worthy of doing your work like everybody's got everybody's got their work right you're worthy of it you know Mm -hmm. so you deserve to be happy you're worthy of your work and it's understanding that no one can can rob you of the peace that comes from a deeper spiritual practice and sometimes And I'm not one of these people who thinks we check out on life, right? But sometimes we have to like sort of like shut things down and put some guardrails on things for a season or whatever and do the exploratory things within ourselves 
to to really just honor what we are at the deepest level and hope that our 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 external reality will will meet that and will match that Mm -hmm. and um i was listening to a podcast the other day and like really really popular person new york times bestseller and they were talking about how like happiness isn't it's a decision that you make you know and there's there's going to be an infinite amount of mornings you're going to wake up and just like not want to do it or whatever and you've just got to constantly be reframing and for to get theoretical about what we do as coaches really especially in the modality that we use is that i'm trying to help someone look at their scenario objectively and shift the way they feel that's the cognitive behavioral thing that that coaching is really good at is what's the scenario how do i feel about it what's the thought process the attitude and the mindset that drives those feelings and how those feelings driven behavior that gives me a result Mm -hmm. and if i'm truly at the end of my rope and i want a different result then how do i have to reframe the attitudes and the thought patterns to get me different feelings to behave differently to give me a different result right and that's that that's really deep and cerebral and it's psychological it's really based in you know the cognitive stuff positive psychology and that's less about like the trauma work and some of the other stuff that people are really into but i think if you don't consistently like learn to do that like um i i I have like a threshold right and i'll think you know at different times and this happens a lot like this might be not not might not be a popular answer but I I get, you know, irritated a lot. You know, I have small children that are really loud, you know, and it's like, (laughs) I'm really stressed. It's like both of us work, you know, it's like, even today, I was like waking up, dropping people off at, you know, preschool, doing all that, you know, in the kind of peak of my life. And I have to reframe constantly. I have to, you know, one of the things that I'm working on is like, I'm fully committed to, to, to what's going on in my life. I'm committed to my business. I'm committed to my wife. I'm committed to my children. And even if things get really hard, I'm committed to the path that I'm on. And I, you know, if I don't make a decision from the moment I wake up, you know, you know, that I'm going to get hydrated and caffeinated and and go out and honor my commitments. Like, so faith, family, and integrity are my top three values. So like, if I don't go out into the world and say, this is who I am on principle, and this is how I'm going to live my life. Yeah, I think we fall back. I think we can get comfortable in our old habits, our neuro patterns, and get comfortable being victims, blaming other people for stuff. And like, there's no power in that. And that's what I tell all of my clients. There's no power in projection. So like victim, it's like, oh, and then projecting is like, hey, this is your fault, right? And then we can rationalize. And that whole process, we just cascade back into like that victim with the ball and chain who's locked up and not living the life they want. But for me, it's just every single day making the decision to know that if it looks bad out here or if it looks stressful out here, it's because of what's in me, Mm -hmm. right? And that's when the mindfulness and the the breath work and different stuff comes in. Yeah, absolutely. So let's say someone comes to you and they're very much in the depths of making choices that are not healthy um, Mm -hmm. whether emotionally or physically, and they're having a hard time with that commitment piece. You know, you, 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 um, have really outlined how important that commitment piece is in this journey of getting unstuck. Mm -hmm. Um, how would you help someone who maybe has never had experience with making a commitment how would you help them get there? Well, I think, you know, and I typically ask people to commit to six months. And that's like I've been building out what I call my guided well-being program, which is six months and involves a pretty like we start from the idea that we're going to go deep. So it's mindset work and it's a deep coaching program. So I want people will come with a problem. It's like, all right, well, what are your goals? And they'll bring me a set of goals on my intake forms. I'm looking, all right, cool. All right. I got your goals. We need to clarify the goals as we clarify the goals and we dig more into why they want these things. We can craft out a mission, right? Like actual, not just, I want to lose 20 pounds. 
I want to make a job transition. I want to start working out, whatever. Like, let's clarify those goals. Tell me why. And as we dig deeper and deeper into that, why we'll sort of find out who the, who you are. And as we really, we got to craft a mission for your, who, who you are at essence. Right. And if you're out there, Maybe you're doing work you don't find valuable, or maybe you've got a good skill set and like a resume, but you're not in an organization that's really conscious and like helping you move forward and grow as a person. It, it might be you're working for a boss that's not helping you grow for a person, whatever. A lot of us look for opportunities to escape these things, not knowing that based on our internal program, we're going to inherit our stuff and just move on to another stuck situation, right? So some people will be in a lot of pain and they'll just look for an off ramp versus looking for growth. Like the, the more, like the more fear and anxiety and stuff that's there, like the bigger, the mountain you climb emotionally, the, the higher the growth potential. Right. So for me, it's all right, let's talk about the problem. You wouldn't be calling me and doing a discovery call. If there wasn't a problem, tell me about your goals. Let's clarify the goals and let's build a bigger mission. So if we get three sessions in or four sessions in and we know, we've really unplugged some stuff and like they've done their homework on some of the simple stuff. Right. Um, we can say, all right, what's our mission. Let's anticipate barriers. Let's have a contingency for that barrier. Let's have a contingency on a contingency on a contingency. Right. Let's have a total plan of what it looks like. Right. And so, you know, I have clients that, initially I try and take them into the fields and they're like, no, 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 I don't do that. That's not what this is for. And it's like, all right, cool. So we're like in that more action based, you know? And then like, I have clients that start with one thing and they just tell me they're really stressed and they want better work life. Like I've had clients do that with the um, working remotely, you know, and well, I've got all these meetings and it's like, I never have time to do what I'm actually hired to do or whatever, you know? So like helping people get used to remote work, and then maybe dig into some fitness. Like I really need to be going to the gym, um, managing family logistics too. Like, you know, if you're going to go to the gym, who's going to watch your kids, you know, all that stuff, like that whole knot. So it's like, you can fall back into your victim mindset there and you can get frustrated. You can get sort of like irritable or whatever, but we've got to be able to move forward. Right. We, and if we're going to commit to our overall mission and a set of goals, we have to have a really strong mindset to do that. So it might start with work life and then there's some fitness stuff. And usually like, I usually after like three to four sessions, we'll send the client like a PDF with like, all right, based on your history, um, maybe check out this, whether it's high protein, whether it's vegan, low carb, whatever, like helping them. Oh, here's some options for you. These are good complex carbohydrates. These are good protein sources. These are healthy oils. So it's helping them. I'll give them a PDF with that. I usually shoot them links to, um, where they can learn the forms of like basic lifts or yoga or whatever. There's different fitness sites. I'll be like, Hey, build a workout plan with this, focus on this, try and do this, like based on what they want. If they tell me they can only go to the gym two days a week, that's fine. If they tell me they want to do, you know, yoga with Adrian on YouTube and, and do yoga in their living room, that's fine. But let's find something that works for you. Because like, for instance, I just got genetic testing back that shows I have some genes for celiac and then I have genes that are more built for power that I'm, that I'm going to be heavier than, than most, like than average, and that I'm terrible with endurance. And then I'm wondering why the hell, like every time I tried to train for a half marathon, I bailed out and hated it. It's because I'm not built for speed. Like I'm not built for long distance running. Although I, yeah. you know, I try to do that forever. And then I'm like, oh, this must be why I love lifting weights, you know? So it's, I want to help people plug in there and find out, or it's, it's the same reason why I don't do great on wheat and grains and stuff. Like let's help you find what works. And, um, I can kind of meet you there with my medical knowledge, but let's also dig into your mindset work, the functional aspects of your life, you know, mm -hmm. family, work-life balance, all that. And then we can craft away and go deeper on the spiritual stuff. Right. Like I have some pretty strong convictions, you know, I've been I've been East. I've been West. I always say when it comes to spirituality, if you go far enough into the East of the meditative practices, you experience things that need to be, it, that tend to be better explained in the West with monotheism. So it's like meeting people wherever they're at, you know, wherever you are at, whether it's just self-help books, spirituality, East, West, traditional religion, evangelical, Catholic, whatever, wherever you're at, I would love to have a deeper conversation about who you are at the core and help you do all that. So we'll get you a little fitness and a food plan. 
do some deeper work, build you out a meditative practice or a contemplative prayer, a devotional practice, and just look at the whole person. Like I never planned for that to be holistic, right? Like I was journaling and when I was building my website, I would journal. And one of the things I wrote down one day was Adam Stevens coaching health mindset soul. And that, and I designed a business card and that's, it says Adam Stevens health mindset soul, right? It says life and wellness coach. And I want to meet people there. And then I went and I did a lunch and learn where I went to this big therapy practice and, and they, they catered lunch. And I taught with a PowerPoint, did like a public speaking about coaching. And they were like, this sounds really holistic. And other people would say that sounds holistic. And then people would see my before and after picture and they'd be like, that's your niche. And I'd be like, well, I don't like, I'm not a personal trainer and I'm not a medical doctor. Like I'm a life coach, right? Who, who happens to have a ton of knowledge firsthand on food and fitness. So it's, it's that whole blend. And um, I ask people like, are you willing to go on a six month journey with me? Right. Are you willing to, you know, really go deep, you know, because meal prep and food and fitness, it's all doable. Like if anybody is out there doing, has good self-care habits, then it's obviously doable. It's reasonable. It's achievable. And so my question there is why not you? And let's build your mindset that'll work. Yeah. Wow. That is so awesome. Thank you for sharing your, not only your personal process, but also the process that you take clients and potential clients through. Um, you know, it sounds like it's been such an incredible journey and uh, you are helping so many people get past all of their you know, historical patterns and getting into the life that, that they've always wanted. So how could people find you if they'd like to reach out to you? So like the hub of all things me is adamstevenscoaching.com. So there's a blog on there. There's another site that's, uh, there's a part of the site that's called hub that has all of my podcast and live stream episodes. I'm on YouTube, Adam Stevens coaching on Instagram. I'm Adam does health. And I'm on Facebook. I have a personal profile and a business profile. But really, if you kind of want to like get to all the links where you can learn about me, um, just go to adamstevenscoaching.com. Scroll down, sign up for the, for the email community. I send out a wellness newsletter about every third week. So I don't send out spam. I don't send out a lot of offers or really intrusive emails. I just send out, you know, you know about every third week or so, sometimes twice a month, a wellness newsletter. It's going to have a little blog in it and some links to good content. It'll have my latest podcast episode. There's an RSS feed that you can subscribe to. So yeah, adamstevenscoaching.com. That's what I would say. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I hope that Adam's message really resonates with you all. Um, I know it you know, certainly gives me a lot of ideas to think about in my own journey through Stuck. And um, please like or share this video if you feel like there's somebody out there in your life that, that really needs to hear these messages. Please share it with them. Um, you can stay tuned to my um, updates on videos and newsletter and whatnot on my website, wingsunfolded.com. Um, you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, all the, all the places. And if there's something that you would like help with a life transition or being stuck, please reach out to me, send me a message. I'd love to connect with you. And remember that it is okay to be stuck, but you don't have to stay there. Thank you again, Adam.